Prison guards, what is the most extreme thing you ever saw? When I was 11, my parents helped a battered wife out of an abusive situation. Her husband was a bad guy but was still roaming free. Nobody knew where he was, and he had made serious threats against my family. My mom ran me through the steps if he were to break in, I would get my younger siblings in the closet with me, she would run and draw him out and away from the house to a predetermined location in the backyard. Once they left I would take the shotgun out of the closet and shoot him. I was groomed to kill a man at 11. Never had to, but totally prepared. When I was a kid, if I ever misbehaved even slightly, I would get a savage ass whooping, the only ducked up part, that I thought at the time, was that the beatings never vary depending on the severity of my misconduct. I bring home an F. Vicious beating. I accidentally forget to take out the trash. Same beating. Never any variation. It wasn't until I was almost 15, that my mind was blown. I went over to a friend's house and shortly after arrival, his mom came in and started yelling at him because the school called, and he got caught trying to forge her signature for something. He did something that would have left me swollen and blue, and I was getting ready to just bail because I didn't want to see the incoming whooping. But after she was done yelling, she just hugged him and said she was more disappointed than angry and that they would need to work on things. I was like, what? Where's the ass whooping? Turns out, not every parent decides to beat the living shit out of a kid for every transgression, big or small. Just mine. When my mom was having a bad day, before I'd leave by myself for primary school, she would say if I'm not here when you get back, you know why, implying that she would kill herself because of her stressful life. When it was my weekend with my dad I would be dropped off at people's houses and I thought it was fun because it was also different and got to meet new people. When I got older I realized it was neglect and he was palming me off while he went elsewhere. One weird example was when my older brother and I asked for Digimon starter decks for Christmas, but my mom and her boyfriend only had money for one for my brother. I got some cheap squirt guns or something. My mom had to leave for whatever reason and I was pouting. My mom's boyfriend asked me what was wrong and I told him I didn't get a Digimon deck. He went over to my brother and asked him if that was true. My brother looked scared and said yes. All I remember is him hitting my brother all over and my brother screaming, trying to crawl away while he dragged him by his legs from the living room into the kitchen hitting him all over. Then I remember him throwing him an ice pack. It was normal cause we were beat all the time and it only seemed fair he should get beat real bad since he got the Digimon deck but, I didn't. My cousin's extremely religious mother would practice rapture drills with her. This consisted of her mom bursting into her room at like 3 a.m., banging pots and pans together, and screaming it's the rapture. The rapture is happening. Will you be saved? She would then make my cousin confess her sins to her and then tell her that she would be going to hell for her sins. It terrified her. But she thought that this was a normal thing that all families slash mothers do until adulthood when she casually mentioned it in conversation and the whole room went silent. Her now husband had to explain to her that no, that is not normal. Growing up, every summer we would pick apples at the local orchard. Lots of apples. Would keep some but most just went to the orchard. I always thought it was just a fun time out. Would pick up apples give them to dad to put in his picking bag, see how shiny you could one, or throw the rotten ones around. 20 plus years later it finally occurred to me that it was a little weird so I asked my dad about it. He looked straight at me and quietly said, with five kids we needed the money. I would save my vacation at work and we would pick apples for the extra money. My parents worked their butts off to provide for us, make enough money to pay for half of our university educations, and save for retirement. All the while making it fun. Not really traumatic but eye-opening for me. Huge respect for mom and dad. My best friend at the time and I used to live in this small country town. Everybody knew everyone and it was quiet, not much happening around town any time of the year. One day my friend and I were walking up and down the street picking berries off trees when I had to wee so I hurried home, three or four houses down from where we were was my home, and went about my business. I must have got distracted by my Barbies on the way back because about 20 minutes later my best friend came running back to my house, her thighs covered in blood. Turned out that our neighbor those few houses up was a pedophile and tried snatching her in his backyard. She was being too loud so he covered her mouth but she struggled her way out somehow from his grasp, crawling down the driveway. He caught her, shoved gravel up her vagina and let her go. 
I still remember my mum and her mum calling the police and looking like they had just witnessed a murder. There used to be this man that would live at my house when I was about 3-5ish named Skip, and whenever I would walk by him he would ask me you wanna see my sexy leg? To which I would always respond yes enthusiastically. He would then roll up his pant leg really high and rub his thigh up and down while dog whistling. At the time I thought it was ducking hilarious. Well, turns out he was my dad's meth dealer who needed a place to stay because he was being investigated for murder. When I was 5, I was home alone. I found a box of matches and brought them to my room. I burned a piece of paper on my carpeted floor, creating a scorch mark in my room. Fortunately, there wasn't a fire. When my dad and stepmom got home, they had put me in the bathtub for a bath. My stepmom was enraged. She grabbed a lighter from her pocket. Then she grabbed my hand. She placed my hand onto an ignited flame for roughly 5 to 10 seconds. The memory is hazy, but I still remember. As a kid, I used to brag about being able to sleep for over 24 hours straight to friends or teachers or really whoever would listen. I was mid-sentence mentioning it as a freshman in college when I realized my divorced father was drugging preschool me with cold medicine so I'd sleep through his weekends of custody with me. It really ducked up my sense of reality for a while. When I was around 8 my best friend at the time used to steal bad food from her pantry and we'd go into her room and she'd then explain to me how we had to be skinny, because being skinny meant boys would like us and so she would then meticulously read the backs of the cookie packs and count out every cookie and how many calories they were for each of us. She also was obsessed with shaving all her body and would try and pressure me into shaving my legs and arms. Once again. Boys liked it when you were hairless. I never really grasped how bizarre it was for 8 year olds to count calories and be hairless for boys. Years later my primary school had a national scandal where 10 to 12 year olds were abusing each other on the mat during class, at lunchtime and well any opportunity they had. I can remember lots of peer pressure for kids to finger each other and make out because that meant you were cool and liked by the hot boys. My friends in junior school, I was around 8 ninths used to joke about the funny things their parents would do, and myself, trying to join in, would describe how my late father would sit me in the bath with him, and get me to suck his dong. I thought it was a funny game with him, which I did when I was around 5 sixths. I realized around 10 years later while sitting in class in high school that I was being abused and nearly had a breakdown. My dad had been dead for around 9 of those years, and my mother never ever brought it up with me. When I mentioned it to her, she became incredibly dismissive and defensive, briefly mentioning something about the police, but not pursuing it because he was due to pass soon afterwards. It ended up overshadowing any other memory I had of that man. My father and I had a game when I was a child. Help daddy remember what hospital he went to last. My father was mentally ill, and would hurt himself purposely to get more anxiety, antipsychotic and pain drugs. There were five hospitals within a two-hour drive of us and in those days, early 90s late 80s, there were no computer systems to track him like there is now. He would literally, break his own fingers, burn himself with oil, anything to get what he needed. And it was my job to help him remember, so he wouldn't get caught. After he took his life when I was 12, I had a lot of feelings and scary memories to deal with. It's been a long hard road, but I hope wherever his is, Hess not in pain anymore. When I was young I was really good friends with a girl whose grandparents lived across the street, and we got along really well, and would hang out all the time. At some point I was maybe 4 or 5 at the time, she invited me to her uncle's house, and they had a big above ground pool built into their deck, and we went swimming. Eventually we got out but we both wanted to get back in, and the uncle said if we wanted to go back into the pool we had to skinny dip. Again, we were both no older than 5. But we did. It took a long time for me to realize the severity of the situation, the implications. Half of me feels like it was harmless, half of me is like damn who the duck does that. Thanks for tuning in to Reddit streams. Hit the subscribe button and the notification bell for more videos. Share your views in the comments below.